So what is a foodie? A foodie is someone who has a passionate interest and appreciation for food and beverages. Foodies are not just regular eaters. They seek out unique and diverse culinary experiences, exploring different cuisines, flavors, and ingredients. They're enthusiastic about trying new dishes, visiting renowned restaurants, and experimenting with cooking techniques. Foodies often engage in food-related activities such as attending food festivals, following food blogs, and even documenting their own culinary adventures on social media. They value the artistry and creativity behind food and consider dining experiences as a form of cultural exploration and self-expression. For foodies, food is not just nourishment, but also a source of pleasure, inspiration, and connection. Okay, all you foodies, the month of August is a foodie holiday, and we start with August 2nd. Each year is Ice Cream Sandwich Day, and it's a day dedicated to the delicious frozen treat known as the Ice Cream Sandwich. An ice cream sandwich typically consists of a layer of ice cream sandwiched between two cookies, wafers, or biscuits. Ice Cream Sandwich Day is a fun, tasty way to enjoy the summer season and satisfy your sweet tooth. It's a day to appreciate the perfect combination of creamy ice cream and delicious cookies and to indulge in a classic frozen treat that brings joy to people of all ages. And guess what? 48 of these frozen dairy creations are eaten every second. Okay, my foodies, we're now at August the 4th, which is Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. Chocolate chip cookies are a type of cookie that's made with chocolate chips as a key ingredient. They're known for their soft and chewy texture with a perfect balance of sweet and chocolatey flavors. The origin of the chocolate chip cookie can be traced back to Ruth Graves Wakefield, who is said to have accidentally invented them in the 1930s when she added broken pieces of chocolate to her cookie dough. So now we're going to show you a real simple recipe how to make chocolate chip cookies. We've got our white sugar, brown sugar, pinch of salt, melted butter, an egg, teaspoon of vanilla extract, your flour, your baking powder, and your chocolate. And you can use semi-sweet dark chocolate or milk chocolate. So let's just drive this train out of the station and make some magnificent chocolate chip cookies. Oh, I'm getting so excited. And I know you're excited too. So if you don't have a pen and pencil to jot this down, I'll give you a couple of seconds and then we'll walk through the recipe so you can make some of these decadent cookies on your own. Okay, now first we're going to put in our sugar, brown sugar, a little bit of salt, and then we're going to add our butter. And we're going to mix this together with a whisk. If you don't have a whisk, then you know a fork will do, or if you've got a blender, you can use that too. We get that nice and creamy. Then we're going to add our eggs. Actually, egg, singular. I would use two, but you know, for this recipe, use one. And add your vanilla extract, your flour, your baking powder, and then you're going to mix until you get a doughy consistency. And again, you're going to use that same whisk. Now we've got that doughy consistency, we're going to add our chocolate chips. Mm. And we're going to make sure that we stir thoroughly to get that mixture so that we've got chips throughout our dough. Now some of you, you know, if you want to use your hands, I prefer to use a scoop. <laughs> and you scoop out your cookies and bake them for 12 minutes at 180 degrees and trust me it's only about 12 minutes and you will have the most perfect cookie ever 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 and don't forget to dunk them ah. next we move on to august 9th which is rice pudding day and rice pudding is a creamy comforting dish made with rice milk sugar and various flavorings it's got a long, rich history that spans across different cultures and regions. 
The exact origins of rice pudding are difficult to trace as variations of this dish can be found in numerous ancient civilizations. Rice was a staple crop in many parts of the world, including Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, where it was commonly used to make a variety of dishes. Mmm. Filet Mignon Day is a celebration dedicated to the popular and highly prized cut of beef known as Filet Mignon. This special day is observed on August the 13th each year and is an opportunity for food enthusiasts and steak lovers to indulge in this tender and flavorful steak. Now, if Filet Mignon is your thing, get ready to drop $90 per pound. Yikes. Moving on to August 18th is Fajita Day. While the origins of fajitas are unclear, it's likely that it was created as a way to celebrate and promote this popular Mexican dish. Fajitas are known for their versatility because they can be customized based off your individual preferences. While beef and chicken are the most prevalent, you can also use them for vegetarian and seafood variations. The choice of toppings and accompaniments further allows for personalization and creativity. Now, August 19th, we honor one of our favorite staples, potatoes. They are loved for their versatility, nutritional value, and delicious taste. They can be boiled, baked, mashed, fried, roasted, used in soups, stews, and salads. They're rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber, making them a healthy and satisfying addition to any meal. National Waffle Day is celebrated on August the 24th each year. This day honors the delicious and versatile breakfast treat, the waffle. People celebrate this day by enjoying waffles in various ways, such as classic syrup and butter, with fruits and whipped cream, or even as a savory dish with good old fried chicken. It's a great day to indulge in waffles and appreciate their unique texture and flavor. You can even have a waffle cone as part of your dessert. Yummy! Let's make some waffles. My mama, when I was little, used to make us waffles and she would beat the egg whites and fold them in and make them light and fluffy. And I don't know why, but when I went to bed last night, all I could think of is mama's waffles. One of the things, of course, my griddle's already on and it's hot. I don't have to melt some butter. A half a stick. So I am going to put this in my microwave right quick. I was going to do one in the mixer, but I'll just do it this way. So I'm just going to separate three eggs. Because you're going to beat your whites and fold them into your batter. That's what Mama always did. Now you can make a lot of different kinds of waffles with this recipe. You can add coconut to it, you can add nuts to it, you can add fruit to it. Um, but we're just going to make the basic waffles this morning. Now our favorite sausage is Swaggerty. Um, that's just what we like. They're a good flavor. It's usually in the frozen section. Sometimes you can find it in the fresh meat section. But we just buy it frozen. Keep it in the freezer. Throw the frozen patties in when we get ready to cook them. So we're going to put these egg whites in my mixer. And now I'm not making meringue. I'm just beating up the egg whites. So it takes that two minutes. So you need to go ahead and get it started. Now we're going to sift two cups of flour. Let's put our soda. 
butter and salt and baking powder in here. So we're going to have uh, a tablespoon of sugar. So it's all purpose flour. Do what? So it's all purpose flour. Yeah, it's all purpose flour. We're going to do uh, two teaspoons of baking powder. And let me say this about baking powder while I'm on the subject. I guess y'all can hear me over this mixer. Um, baking powder gets old really quick. So if you make something that's not rising, it's probably because you ain't bought any new baking powder. Soda is a teaspoon. And salt is a half a teaspoon. So we're going to go ahead and sift this. Those eggs are almost done already. up that way. So I got two cups of buttermilk. You can use sweet milk if you like sweet milk waffles, but we like buttermilk and everything. Get some vanilla. The recipe don't call for vanilla, but I'm going to put some in there. Um, this is an old cookbook. I mean, it's got everything in it. It's got Southern griddle cakes. It's got Sunday waffles, potato pancakes. It's old as the hills. Um, it's called the Edition of Cook Encyclopedia Cookbook. But it is a good cookbook. It's one mama wore slap out, and I remember her opening up this cookbook when she made her waffles. I do remember that. So that's what I'm doing this morning. And a lot of y'all probably thinking, yeah, okay. you use the three egg yellows, the whites are beat up in the mixer. Now, a lot of y'all probably thinking, I can't believe you're doing this this morning, but I'm really not. I mean, I'm say, of course, I'll miss my mama, but she suffered for a long time. She's been bedridden for about six months. I'm going to put a tablespoon of sugar in here. And it's a blessing when you know Jesus is your personal Savior and you know you've got a home in heaven. Let me tell you this, I never, because nobody this close to me has ever passed away, I have never loved Jesus any more than I love him today for giving us eternal life in heaven. So, I'm in a celebrating mood, and I'm making Mama's waffles. Alright, so, we're going to slide this back out of the way, and I'm going to add my flour. We're going to mix this up. Waffle iron. Let's finish mixing this up. Get sidetracked. It already looks fluffy. It ain't even folded in the egg whites yet. So beat it pretty good. You don't want lots of flowers. Flour. It smells good. It smells like a doggone cake mix, kind of. All right. You make waffles, you got to have a big bowl. You pour your batter in here. And I do not like Belgian waffles. I don't like those big holes because I like the old-fashioned little waffle iron, and you can't even hardly find them anymore. Because to me, they're crunchier because the Belgian waffles, when you fill them full of syrup, they just turn to mush. Now we're just going to fold the egg whites into the batter. And you just fold them in. It's that simple. That 
that's what makes them fluffy and crunchy. So if you don't do the extra step, and it only takes a minute if you've got a KitchenAid mixer to beat up some egg whites. Not a big deal. So just fold them in like that. And now we're going to make a waffle. Now I haven't made one in a while. It's not something we eat all the time. So if it flows out of the waffle iron, so what, right? So I would think a half a cup would probably do it. So we'll just use a half cup scoop and see what happens. And I'd rather them be too little than too big and come out the edges. So you just close your waffle iron. I've got it turned up to four. If you like them dark, you know, you can turn it up to five. I like my waffles dark and crunchy. I don't like them light. So I got it turned all the way up. Okay, it's green. Green means go. It's ready. So let's get Chris a plate. I'm making two, so I'm going to go ahead and drop another one. But that's the way I like them, like that. If you let it cool off just a second, it won't get soggy on the bottom. Let me get some. The steam from it is going to make it uh, soft. I'm going to taste a piece of butter on it. Taste like mama's. Yummy. I haven't had a waffle in so long. And uh, it was just on my mind. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Color Valley Cooks, where we cook like mama did by a cookbook.